The Coindesk Spotlight is brought to you by Nexo, the place to earn on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. BitGo seeing its assets under custody swell to over $64 billion, the crypto custody provider being acquired by Galaxy Digital, owing the surge to growing institutional interest in the space and the need for institutional grade safekeeping to match. Joining us now is BitGo CEO Mike Belshi. Good morning, Mike. Good to have you on the show. So talking about this institutional investment surge, are institutions really getting into crypto? There, there are other folks such as Anthony Scaramucci of Skybridge Capital saying, that about 10% of institutions may be in it, but most are sitting out this round. Uh, is it still too early? Well, good morning. Let's see. It's a uh, it's an ongoing effort. <clears throat> and uh, for those of us that are building in the space, we continue to build. We've been doing this now, uh, I guess, eight years in total, but really on the institutional focus uh, over the last five years. And I think as we've built out you know, products and safety and insurance, you know, it's been able to bring in more and more folks into the space. Our goal is to make sure that digital assets are ubiquitously available to, to everyone. Um, and that means the ability to store with institutions as well as to, store, to be able to store and hold and manage um, individually. So uh, institutional adoption continues to grow um, exactly as we would expect it to. But, you know, there's not this, you know, massive wall of institutional money that used to be talked about a few years ago. Uh, instead, it's just a, a steady stream upward. What 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 percentage or proportion of institutions do you think have made the jump into the investing in crypto? Well, the interesting part there is that the leaders of those institutions have all placed their crypto bets already. I'd, I'd say it's like eighty uh, percent actually have individual bets. Now, the qu second question is, can they deploy funds as part of their business or their fund? So, uh, a common conversation just a few years ago was, you know, this is all sounding pretty good. I don't think I'm really ready to put it into my business yet where I'm a fiduciary, uh, but let me introduce you to my family office and the investment happens there. Um, so today we're continuing to make strides on all the institutional side. This includes, you know, leverage investors as well as, you know, long holder investors. Um, but uh, obviously there's more work to be done. So Mike, uh, what is the, the breakdown of the institutions that have, uh, that, that you're, that you're the custodian for? Uh, how, how do they look like? What institutions and, you know, percentage-wise, what types of institutions roughly are using your services? Um, let's see. For, for us, we do hit heavy on the crypto native companies, of course. That is where you see the most adoption. Um, those are companies that have already kind of taken the plunge towards uh, everything digital asset related. Uh, then um, other places we're, we're seeing is, is family offices and then now, you know, endowments. And I think we'll soon see pensions. Um, the interesting thing here is that you've got long-term wealth preservation uh, managers that are trying to figure out how they're going to deal with a world where, you know, bonds basically have no yield. Uh, and the currency, of course, is not a good place to store value. So they've been moving into, into crypto pretty pretty quickly. Um, on the trading and, you know, head, um, leverage side, you've got hedge funds that are participating. I'd say these are more in the early stage, um, but they are growing. And then lastly, we hear a little bit of noise about corporates. Um, those that have large treasuries may be interested in preserving those treasuries. And frankly, you do need a pretty strong inflationary hedge at this point. Um, but uh, that's still growing as well. What, it, you know, without, I, obviously you probably don't want to break, that, break it down too much, but what percentage would you say is crypto native versus uh, traditional finance? Oh, I would say it's uh, somewhere between 50% and two thirds. Okay, so it's still very crypto native. Uh, Early in days, use absolutely. Case right now. Okay. That's right. And I suppose an another question I had was um, you recently had your COO um, also become a, the president of this trust. Uh, Cassandra Lechner, uh, the Bico Trust Company. So at what point do you have so many assets under custody that having a president to look after these assets and trust is necessary? Well, look, we're constantly building the trust to a higher, higher standard. Uh, I think our clients are pretty excited, actually, about the changes that we've made. The trust company personnel has grown tremendously over the last uh, year in particular. And this is reflective of, you know, uh, how do you secure large amounts of digital asset? Now, all of this is built on the architecture, which removes any single point of failure, of course. So involved with every transaction uh, that goes through BitGo is actually two completely independent companies. 
Uh, one is Bitco Inc., which is providing a technology and policy management component. The other one is the Bitco Trust Company, which is holding keys and cold storage. Uh, our clients like this very much. They understand it. Uh, a number of competitors have all of their wallets, uh, all of their assets in hot wallets. Um, you know, and we, we think that's a dangerous place to be for the size of asset that we're, we're protecting these days. So expanding the trust company is natural. Cassie is a fantastic leader. She comes out of uh, a long uh, history. She's formerly a, a, a regular at DFS um, and an attorney as well. So uh, she's building up a great team, uh, meeting the demands of clients and the standards you expect with a first class trust company.